So, uh, so I work at the National Institute of Extension Technology out in Boulder, Colorado. I'm currently in DC. And what I do is write software essentially that evaluates equations of state. And to, to do that, we require differentiation. And so my subtitle here is the agony of generic programming, because that's how I was feeling about this whole topic until not too long ago. So very briefly, uh, equation of states for thermodynamics uh, for C++ experts. So think about something like ideal gas or van der Waals that you can remember from maybe your chemistry class in high school. So you have a function alpha r. Um, let's not worry about any of the details about what this is. We're going to get to the software in just a second. So we have alpha r. It's some function. It takes arguments, temperature, density, and composition, t, rho, and x. And if you want to calculate something like pressure, you need to evaluate this derivative, the alpha r, d, rho. So this is a ubiquitous sort of thing in thermodynamics. You have lots of derivatives of various other things. So how do we evaluate this derivative? In most cases, what we do is that we have some model and we work out analytically what all of the derivatives are with respect to all the properties. And sometimes this is multiple derivatives and cross derivatives, and that gets to be really painful. So here we're looking at handwritten derivatives. This is computationally the fastest, but it's very error prone because you can easily make a mistake, even if you're using computer algebra systems to do some of the heavy lifting for you. And it's extremely annoying. Then you have options like finite differentiation. So problem here is you have numerical error. You don't really know what step size to take. There are various approaches you can use to try to help you figure out this, but it's generally not easy to do. And you always have some error that you're working with. Then you have things like algorithmic differentiation. So for instance, there's this library autodiff in C++. And one of my favorite uh, ways to do this is to enter into the complex plane. So there are a number of numerical tools like Cauchy differentiation, complex, dif complex set differentiation, and multi-complex differentiation that allow you to calculate numerical derivatives with standard tools to numerical precision. It's pretty remarkable, really. And differentiation is a, a, is a ubiquitous tool used all over the place, especially when you start think, talking about things like machine learning and optimization. So here I'm going to show you a really short example of how you can actually differentiate numerical functions using complex numbers. So for instance, what I'm showing here is code to calculate the derivative of the function sine of x with respect to x, which as we remember from high school, is equal to cosine of x. And so the really remarkable thing is that using this complex step derivative, which is shown here, if you put in an argument, uh, which is a complex number and double, uh, along with an incredibly small step, you'll notice this step here is 1 times 10 to the negative 100. This is not a typo. Uh, you're able to calculate cosine of x, or really the derivative of sine of x, to numerical precision. And I'm showing here that you get the, the same value for cosine of x and the derivative of sine to about 16 digits or, or more. And, and you can do this to arbitrary precision uh, if you have more precision to work with. So generally, we have a model which uh, has some initialization where you can store parameters that are needed to, to evaluate the model. And then the really challenging piece that I really struggled with a lot is you, the model then has a method, we're calling it f here, which has two templated arguments, two, uh, x1 and x2. And I made a very simple model here, which is just add the two arguments together. But in general, it's much more complicated. And the arguments that go into this function are some combination of numerical types. So. Here we're talking about things like, if you remember on the last slide, we had double and complex double arguments. You can have more, much more complicated arguments like autodiff types, which allow you to do differentiation. You have multi-complex arguments, boost multi-precision arguments. Basically, the point is this function is supposed to be very generic, that you don't really, that you can put in wherever you want and you get an answer. You really don't know the argument types a priori when you write your model. That's really challenging dealing with C++ type systems, uh, especially when you can do something in one line of code in Python and it takes 
30 lines of code in C++, although it is much easier than it used to be. And as I said, the real models that I'm actually evaluating are much more complicated than this trivial example. So what am I actually trying to do? The challenge that I really struggled with is to store instances that have this identical and very generic call signature in some sort of dynamic container. Because ultimately what I need is a C API so that I can store the instances and then call them from the C interface, but I don't a priori know what arguments are going into these methods. So that's really quite a, an interesting architectural challenge. And so at the C level, there'll be some sort of unique identifier and initialization is, is managed via JSON strings. So you can pass in arbitrary arguments and so on. So the goal is to have only one implementation in one place and to avoid uh, C++ craziness. The people in my world are not C++ people and I would like them to be able to read the code and have some idea what it's doing. So the, the goal is to keep the function implementations themselves extremely simple, even if there's some like pretty crazy C++ machinery around the edges. And hopefully a manageable compile time. So what I ended up doing is building a std vector of std variants of instances that have these generic methods and adding visitors and concepts in order to actually call the methods of these instances. So I'd really like to thank everybody at this conference for all of the talks that I've attended because that's really sort of crystallized for me how to, to set up this whole architecture. So you really don't have a choice. You can't use pure virtual functions with templated arguments. And this is something that I was really hitting my head against for a long time. And so this variant plus visitors plus concepts approach is really a nice way of resolving this sort of polymorphism problem. And this approach works just absolutely great. It's very computationally efficient, and I'm really happy with the speed of the progress I've been able to make, uh, largely thanks to new C++ uh, idioms that are now available. But the big problem that I'm really struggling with, and I'm sure many of you can sympathize, is that the compile time is extremely slow. The more models that I throw into the whole system, the worse it gets. I mean, I'm looking at two minutes to, to, uh, to compile one file, which for me is very long. And anytime I make any change at all, if I add a space, it's another two minutes gone. So uh, it, it's extremely annoying. So looking into solutions like modules, maybe some sort of, I don't know, constrained templates to help the compiler not have to go through this whole combinatorial problem. Um, I'm not sure what to do here. So if anybody has any ideas, I would very much appreciate it. And another issue that I'm running into is that it's extremely annoying to have to enumerate all of the model types in the, the variant that stores these instances. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of like compile time type registration or something like that. Um, that's really all I had prepared. I've never done one of these lightning talks before. So if anybody has any great ideas or wants to chat with me about numerics and stuff, uh, I'll be here most of the rest of today and tomorrow. So that's all I had. Thanks.